what what is happening or what has happened in Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee. And um, I haven't talked with you since, yep. you know, Mr. Nichols lost his life at the hands of five brutal people and uh, five others that stood by and let it let it happen and did nothing to help him. Yeah. I think that's even as much as the beating, the inactivity yeah. and another officer has been uh, two more, I think, have been fired. I think the EMTs are also going to be brought up on some charges because I don't even understand. But they, they did that in George Floyd, too. At least they tried to come uh, Chauvin shooed them away. You know, they tried to help George Floyd. This right. was like, let's prop him up and not give him any services. Not he's a human being. And it was he convicted in that moment? Like, what was his crime? I'm still reckless driving. Is this what we do? No, they never even asked to see his license or registration. They just commenced to whooping uh, Brother Tyree. And I haven't seen the video. And I, I have I have heard narratives and I've read, but I won't watch it. It's just it's not good for the spirit at this point. And I, I think I've, I probably saw the first two or three seconds. And it reminded me enough of gang initiation and, and you know, even uh, rituals that we call ritual in college. And it, it looked so bad that I just I couldn't I had to, you know, firewall it out of my life. Um, there's a lot to say. I don't even know where to start. Ask me a question because it's just. All right. So- All right. So you're a noob. You're a noob. You I am noob? indeed. Gamma okay. 2001. OK. And you, you said something about initiation because three of those. Uh, perpetrators of that uh, horrific, brutal murder, they were Omega Psi Phi men. And, oh, now, um, hazing has been outlawed. There's a whole documentary on hazing. We've talked to to the guy that did it a few times on these airwaves. Um, But there is a pathology among us, and even in how we discipline our children, yeah. that it gives gives uh, a, a nod to enslavement. Right. And and we have conditioned ourselves to believe that this is how, you know, we make each other tough. This is how we become stronger in community. This is how you raise your children. But I think this is pathology. I think it's, it's sickness um, and we can do it better. I'm watching a TV series called All American mm. and there's a, the All American Homecoming is the HBCU version of it. And this season, two of the stars are pledging. And one of the, the brothers that's pledging, they they challenge the the, the guys, can we do this differently? Yeah. Just because it's always been done, do we have to be brutal to one another? Can we do it in love? Can we find a way into brotherhood that re- requires us to love one another? And it's shifting. And I was like, this is a nice moment on TV, even though it's inside pool. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that, most human beings, when granted power, will exercise it in the way they have seen it used for the same ends and against the same victims. The problem is that part of police power is the ability to brutalize other human beings, right? So that should not even be in a universe of policing authority, so to speak. And by statute, it's probably not. Um, But the fraternity stuff is unfortunately a simple corollary of what human beings do with power, right? Most people don't have the courage to do like you're saying in that episode and reverse that trend. Uh, and, and tradition ain't nothing but peer pressure from dead people. So we need mm. to be hard mm. and look about- Wait, pause. You just saying stuff and didn't, you gotta, you know, even the past <laughs> to take a moment to say some, I'm preaching good right now, you know. <laughs> say, Please yeah, repeat yeah. That. That's that's why I'm not a preacher. I don't I don't have it in me to self congratulate. I knew I knew you'd catch it though. That's the arrogance. So like I knew it was coming, so I keep going. Um, but yeah, I, you know, and so we really need to examine, re-examine those traditions. But that, and and honestly, I pray for my brothers of Q Sci Fi because they are right up there with us as Kappas as one and one A in in Black Greek letter organizations. And it's so I can't imagine how devastated I would be if if three of those brothers had been noobs. And and that's just that's a sad day. Um, I think it's important, though, that we do recognize fraternity stuff aside that these were five African-American men who did this. Uh, I think that speaks to a deep sickness within African-American men that, you know, I think um, the great uh, what's my brother's name? The great Damon Young uh, from Very Smart Brothers uh, and is now uh, I think he's the ethicist at The New York Times. He wrote a piece a couple of years ago for his blog, Very Smart Brothers, that said black men are the white people of black men are the white men of black people. And I think that <laughs> this is what we saw right there. Right. 
And, you know, for anybody to feel that they had the license to degrade another human to that degree, obviously, I don't think they were trying to kill him. But for anybody to feel like they had the license to do that, um, you know, it, it's just soulless. It's soulless. And it's really representative of where a lot of our cishet, cisgender, heterosexual brothers have taken uh, these spaces of power that they no doubt occupy uh, among you know, non-white communities. They're at the top of the food chain. And what we saw was what we saw was that. And that and that's really something that us straight brothers are going to have to deal with. Why do we express ourselves, even if it's just frustration or tension or our personal issues? Why does it manifest itself in physical violence towards those who can't defend themselves? That's wildly unacceptable. Um, but I think that the five of them all being African American is instructive because it shows that. It's not about the color of the cop. It's about the color of the usual victim. This is how black and brown people are treated in the United States. This is how the weird skinny skateboarder is treated in the United States. And the idea that it's black people doing it is good because it shows that the fundamental corruption, the flaw lies in the system, right? Mm -hmm. The flaw lies in the system that allows this. And so therefore black cops are just maintainers of a fundamentally corrupt system, right? And so it's the system that not only needs reform, but perhaps abolition. Uh, and when people are talking about uh, abolishing police, there is a brilliant, brilliant sister from the soul of St. Louis named Derricka Purnell, D-E-R-E-C-K-A-P-U-R-N-E-L-L. -L. And she has wrote the leading book on thought about ab abolishing police. I can't call the name of the book right now, but I have two copies. Brilliant scholar, Harvard Law School, and she wrote the book about abolishing police, and she makes some very good points, all of which we see in the Memphis case, which was all the police reforms that we have sought out over the last several years, since Trayvon Martin and uh, obviously George Floyd, all of those reforms were in place in Memphis, and they didn't stop this. A duty to intervene, a duty to report, body cameras, dashboard cameras, a duty to report on the back end. All of that was in place and it didn't stop this from happening. There is a system here that is fundamentally flawed, regardless of the color of the police officer and frankly, regardless of the color of the police uh, uh, chief. And that's the last thing that we've got to get to here. In 1993, the city of Atlanta created the Red Dog Unit and it's an acronym for something, but everybody knows the Red Dogs. The Red Dogs were the biggest gang in the South they were domestic terrorists, and their job was to clean up the streets of Atlanta. Remember, 1993. Why are you cleaning up the city of Atlanta? In advance of the 1996 Olympics. Their mm. job was to clean up the city. And in policing talk, that means get these black dudes off the street. If you're walking down the street sagging, you're walking down the street drinking a 40, you're going to get your just for being out there, right? And black people have not reclaimed those geographies of the city of Atlanta since. They threw these men into the criminal justice system. They became cannon fodder for the prison industrial complex, and they took them off the streets of Atlanta. That led to the Olympics being in a nice, clean city. That led to those neighborhoods then being gentrified as historic areas and all of that foolishness. But this was enforced. This was economic policy as brutally enforced by the Red Dogs in Atlanta. The person who for 20 years supervised the Red Dogs is now the black woman chief of police of Memphis. She had a stop in Raleigh in between, but she came to Memphis and created the Scorpion Unit in the spirit of the Red Dogs, which was a terrorist organization for black men in Atlanta, Georgia. And I know you got fam and rebels and listeners in Atlanta who can verify what I'm saying. Hell, if you listen to Outkast or Goody Mob like I did during that period, I know you listen to Northern, you know, you listen to Kumo D and all that stuff. But if you listen to Outkast, they was talking about the Red Dogs from the jump, right? And what they did to terrorize these communities. Well, that's the mentality. That's the specific organization that was the Scorpion unit in Memphis. That's what you're dealing with. And I don't care if the chief or chaplain or whatever you call it, uh, commissioner is a black woman. She was the person who had that in place. She had the specific resume to bring, oh, we know what we want here in Memphis, right? We trying to build around this FedEx forum where John Morant and them play downtown. We trying to revive the Stax Museum. We trying to make this safe for white folks to feel like they can come from Germantown and, and Shelby County into the city and live, work, eat, and play. Let's get these Negroes up out of here. 
because they scaring people. They say man, they got dreadlocks and tattoos. And even if they innocent, even if they scholars like the young brother in the wine movie on Netflix uh, from Memphis, we can't have these people around here because it detracts from our economic growth purposes. So come on, Scorpion unit, let's do this. And we know just the person to hire. And this is the result of that. And so that sister is not a hero for firing those brothers right away. She's not because she created the culture. 